Hi, the purpose of this video is to look at observation versus inference. Um, and I wanna just start with this picture of this poor little girl here. Uh, this is not me. Uh, she looks very upset. Uh, she's got an empty ice cream cone in her hand. I'm not sure what that white roll is on the ground there. But um, there are some things that I noticed about this photo. I just want to lay them out here. One, the girl's ice cream fell off the cone. It's It seems pretty obvious that that's what's happened here. Uh, two, the girl's upset that she lost her ice cream. Who wouldn't be? She's wearing pink shoes. Um, it is summertime, is my guess. Uh, there's a black barrel behind her, and she's holding an empty ice cream cone. Now, these are all reasonable things to say about this photo. The problem is some of these are observations, and some of them are inferences. I'm going to highlight the ones that are observations. She's wearing pink shoes. There's one black barrel behind her, and she's holding an empty ice cream cone. Those are things that are relatively indisputable. The other three things are inferences. So first, let's define what an observation is. An observation is a factual statement based upon what you can gather with your senses. There are two types of observations. A qualitative observation speaks to the condition or the quality of something, like the color or the age. A quantitative observation tells us an amount, like it is 75 degrees outside or this weighs 2.6 grams. Inferences, though, are conclusions that we draw based upon our observations and our prior experience. So this takes some background knowledge for us to say, yep, I've seen this before, and this is probably what is the case. Um, as we get older, we tend to make better inferences because we have more prior experiences. Let's watch this video and make a list of some things that we see. Smoke is given off, the flask is warm to the touch, the temperature rises by 50 degrees Celsius, and the water in the flask bubbles. Now, these are all very reasonable things to say about this, but again, in this list we have some observations and we have some inferences. Can you pick out which are the observations and which are inferences? And for the inferences, can you rephrase them so that they're more observational instead of inferential? The first one, smoke is given off, it seems like smoke is given off, but we don't know that that's smoke. We do know that that is a gas, or at least it appears to be a gas, so maybe it's better to say a gas is produced. The flask is warm to the touch. That's something that through a video we can't do, uh, but in the lab this year we will be able to touch the side of the flask. So this is a good observation. The temperature rises by 50 degrees Celsius is an excellent observation. In fact, it's a quantitative observation, which is what chemists love. Quantitative observations involve numbers, don't forget. And so taking the temperature 50 degrees Celsius as a change in temperature is an excellent observation. The water in the flask bubbles. Well, we are seeing bubbling in that flask, but we don't know that that's water. In fact, it's actually hydrogen peroxide. So it's best just to say, the liquid in the flask bubbles. Those are more observational in nature and less inferential. So observation versus inference, very important as we begin a year filled with experiments. It's important that you're making observations that don't infer too much. But then, of course, you can make inferences based on those observations. Observations should be facts. Inferences can be conclusions. Thank you.